Hi, this is a video response to Nothing Fancy's review of the Spot GPS Beacon Tracker. I uh, want to say I'm a big fan of Nothing Fancy. We have quite a lot in common. In fact, we have the same military occupation. I just serve a, a different uh, Air Force. I want to talk about uh, the Spot Beacon, and I'm going to be pretty negative about the Spot Beacon. Nothing's pretty much gone through all the positives of it, but I want to compare it to uh, the new 406 type beacon and uh, the reason why you might want to consider a 406 over a spot. Getting into the review, uh, this here is a spot, this is the older version of the spot that Nutton was talking about is a little bit large and, and bulky. Right off the bat, things I, I do not like about this beacon are, uh, you can see the 911 button and the help button. It's just a confusing button system that Spot chose and I don't know how they got through this, the testers with this type of device. I find it uh, I find it very confusing and, and not very user friendly at all. And those those buttons, by the way, have huge differences. One is supposed to the 911 is supposed to summon, you know, a complete rescue, and the help button is just supposed to be a a, a notice to your friends to come give you some hand. Next thing uh, you want to consider when you're talking about a spot is is the cost beacon. This device here is uh, $150. That's kind of the cost I I saw when I went online. And then you're going to need to pay an additional $100 annual fee just to uh, just to make any of your help buttons and your 911 buttons work on there. So you're looking at $100 every year just to have the beacon be a, a useful device. On top of that, if you want to use it for tracking, which is going to cost you another $50 on top of that. So you're looking at an annual fee of $150 every year to keep your spot device running. Now, in comparison, uh, Let's talk about the 406 personal locator beacons. Here's a, a fast find. This is by McMurdo. And it's almost the same size as the old spot tracker, a little bit smaller in comparison, you can see. However, it is a little bit bulkier. There is no tracking in this type of personal locator beacon. There are new ones coming out, and I, I think that's going to make a huge difference if you're a person who needs that tracking or thinks that tracking is a valuable feature for you. But uh, this type of device, 406 Beacon, this one's a live one, definitely compact and, and quite small, not waterproof in this case. I've got another one here, uh, this is a training device by ACR. This one's actually waterproof, very bulky, but maybe something you want to consider if you're going to use on top of your, uh, on your kayak or that type of thing. Uh, lastly, here's another ACR type one, and uh, this one's a little bit smaller, it's got 406 uh, GPS capability in it as well. Now, in talking the main differences between a spot beacon and a 406 beacon, I want to talk about their satellite systems and how the signal is actually received. If you look around, I'm sure you're gonna you'll find out that the spot beacon works on the Magellan satellite system. And I know they've had some difficulties with their phone system. I think they're trying to rectify that. They say in their literature that it does not affect the spot beacon, their, their satellite system. But I can tell you this: the spot beacon requires a clear view of its satellite and that satellite requires a clear view of the ground receiving station at the same time. So in other words, the satellite needs to see both the spot beacon and the ground receiving station at the same moment in order for your message to be transmitted. And you'll see if you go online and you look at some people, this is actually a real live beacon by the way and, and in my experience as well, but reading online you'll find out that people are having difficulty with tracking. And they're finding out that when they when they go out in the woods, uh, they're not getting consistent continuous tracking, and that's because the satellite, as it orbits past, is not having a continuous view of both the beacon and its ground receiving station. That's also what makes the spot a regional device. It's not good all the way around the world. Beacons have to have a view of the Global Star satellite. So when they don't have that, it's not getting the signal passed. In other words, if you are operating somewhere outside of their, uh, of their area of operation, say you want to operate in Africa or uh, the North or South Pole, that's not going to work for you. A spot beacon is not going to be a device that's going to be efficient for you. Uh, that, in my mind, makes it right off the bat not a very good rescue device. It, it, that's why I said it makes it sort of an okay tracking device, but not a good rescue device. On the other hand, the new 406 personal locator beacons, as well as the EPIRBs which go on boats and the ELTs which go on uh, airplanes, all use 
a digital, digitally transmitted signal. Now when the 406, when this beacon sends up its signal, it does not have to see anything other than a satellite in order for that signal to be passed. The satellite will capture the data and when it flies by a ground station, pass the data off. What's more, there are uh, at least two different satellite systems which are picking up the 406 signals right now. There's the low Earth orbiting ones, the LEOs they're called, and they orbit quite close to the Earth and cover the polar regions as well as all other areas of the world. Uh, they're the ones that are going to capture the signal hold, signal, hold on to it, and then drop it down to a, a ground station when it passes by a ground station. So the satellite does not need to be in view of both the ground station and the beacon at the same time, making it very efficient. The other satellite system is the geostationary satellite system. Those are the satellites that are in stationary orbit over the equator of the Earth, and there are several of those. Those satellites will see a GPS beacon, actually they'll see a 406 beacon, as soon as it's turned on. If that beacon happens to have a GPS encoding, which this one does, that GPS signal is, is linked up to the satellite and that is relayed almost immediately back to the Earth. You can, you can anticipate probably in about a five minute alert with this type of device. Where when we're talking about a spot, there could be 20 to 40 minutes between satellite passes before your message gets passed. So when you're talking about a 406 signal, you're talking about a much faster transmission of that signal to your rescuers. Now, what are some of the drawbacks of the device? Of course, it is, uh, it is more expensive. I think this device here is about $250 to begin with. I suggest if you're going to get one, to get one with the GPS. The satellite system can figure out your location without the GPS. It takes a couple of passes by the low Earth orbiting satellites to actually figure it out with any certainty. And that could take you 40 minutes to an hour, depending on how fast the satellites are in your location in the world. What are some of the other positives of the 406 personal locator beacon? Well, besides the fact that it's a worldwide device, that it's a global device and, can be, and the signal can be received around the world, Rescue agencies around the world generally know how to deal with this type of device. In other words, when they receive a beacon or an alert from one of these beacons, they know how to, how to take the signal and task out the resources that are in their areas to effect a rescue of you. Now, if you're in Canada, one thing to know is rescues are free, so that insurance that you might get with a spot is kind of a waste of your money to begin with. Right now in Canada, all rescues are free. Personal locator beacons, by the way, in Canada are responsible are the responsibility of the RCMP or the local police detachment. So when the signal is received, it's going to be forwarded to the local police detachment. However, if there's any indication that your signal or that the source of the personal locator beacon might be coming from something on the water, say a kayaker or a boater, or that it may be coming from an aircraft, maybe you use it on your personal aircraft, then almost immediately rescue resources are going to be dispatched for that. And you can improve that response from rescuers. One of the things you do when you get a 406 uh, personal locator beacon is fill out a registration uh, card or go online and fill one out online. Now, one good thing to do would be put in there what type of use you use your beacon for. Maybe you use it for hiking and you can put a comment in there to that effect. Maybe you use it hunting or snowmobiling. Maybe you use it on your boat or your kayak or possibly on board your aircraft. Put a note in there that says what you're using it for and any other possible information that might help out rescuers. That's going to help with the dispatch of the rescuers to your scene. That's going to help us know what we're coming to look for, whether it's going to be a boat, an airplane, or maybe a hiker or hunter in the woods. In the end, what I think you've got when you're dealing with a 406, these 406 type beacons, is a much more robust signal. I've seen these signals transmitted from basements, I've seen and received by the satellites with good position information. I've seen them in steel hangars and the signal still gets out with very little degradation. So you're looking at a very robust signal and a much more reliable method of passing your position or your distress on to rescuers.